Coming up today on YOLO Texas. There was another city up north that claimed to be the turkey capital of the world. They were going to settle this little rivalry by doing a turkey race. The history behind Green Berets and where they came from, and nobody's telling that story through here. We got some beautiful places to stay, and it's just a place to get away and relax. Join us on our trip across Texas. Turkey Fest. Oh, this is so exciting! It what is can very we exciting. get into today? Well, today we're celebrating 50 years of Quirrell Turkey Fest, 50 Ooh. years of turkey racing, 50 years of parades like this one that you see here, uh -huh. 50 years of festivals and entertainment, and of course, when we race turkeys, we have our Ruby Begonia and we have Minnesota Paycheck. Yeah, so, Minnesota Paycheck. So okay. <laughs> Minnesota is here as well. Awesome. So we claim to be the uh, turkey capital of the world. Unfortunately, there was another city up north that claimed to be the turkey capital of the world oh. in Worthington, Minnesota. <laughs> so two journalists got together and they decided that they were going to settle this little rivalry of who was going to be the turkey capital of the world by doing a turkey race. We're going to do a turkey race today. today Absolutely. Here, I'm referee. You are refereeing. This is your official ref jersey and your VIP pass for the day. It's serious business, so I hope you're ready. <laughs> I don't know that, uh, I think Paycheck tried to give Ruby a kiss or something, <laughs> and uh, Ruby wouldn't have anything to do with it, so he got on out of town and, and came up to the finish line first. All right, that was a tough loss out there. Tell me what's going through the mind of the team right now. Well, you know, in professional turkey racing, anything can happen, and our bird just loves squirrels so much, wants to go visit with the crowd, and, and we finally got him back out on the road, and then he started running well, but yes. just such a social bird. And, you know, they treat us so nice down here, you just want to be friendly. There you have it. It's an intense race today. And none other than the hometown of Cuero took away the win at Turkey Fest.
Turkey Fest itself mm -hmm. started, uh, as you know, 50 years ago. Yep. And that was uh, at the end of the turkey trots. Mm -hmm. They would uh, drive the turkeys okay. down the streets. And the railhead was out here at the park. Mm -hmm. And so the turkeys would start here and then go downtown. Oh, wow. And people came from Much miles. longer than yes. our race today. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And there would be thousands, you know, 10, 12, 15, 16,000 turkeys that oh would drive. My God. They'd load them up on the railroad cars uh -huh. and then ship them north. Uh -huh. And the event was held in early November uh -huh. so that everybody had their turkey on their table for uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Now the Turkey Fest mm -hmm. established, okay, now who's going to be the the turkey capital of the world. Right. Not, not just. Not just the U.S. Yes, yeah, the, the world. Whole world. And, and Worthington challenged us. Yeah. And so they found a turkey named Paycheck. Because <laughs> nothing goes faster than a paycheck. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then we had Ruby Begonia. Yeah. And she's done extremely well. Aren't how poetic that the hometown yeah. wins the 50th anniversary? How about that? Yes. We does. want her back next year for a three piece. He'll try. Cheers! Tell me about your barbecue. What do we have here? We got barbecue beef brisket. We started this morning at 5 o'clock. Some of us didn't okay. get here at 5. Okay. <laughs> here we go. Right before Texas. Barbecue row. I don't know what's better, the hospitality or the barbecue. This place is amazing. Don't go anywhere. We visit our next Texas town when we come back. mountain of history right. you know behind green berets and where they came from and nobody's telling that story through beer thank you all for having us out here this is a very special place here in the alamo city so tell me how you got started natalie bought me a beer kit it sat there forever and i was like oh man i bought a dud of a gift but then he broke it out one day and um yeah. how'd that the first one go it's horrible <laughs> it was terrible yeah <laughs> Uh, the worst yeah, the beer first ever. first one was nothing like beer that I remember. We bought a bigger and better brewing system and just kept going and the beer kept getting better and better, you know, the more experience I got, of course. And I started mailing beer samples to Green Beret buddies of mine, like my own teammates and whatnot. And they're just like, man, this is really good. They thought that it was just super cool, like you should do this professionally. So you are a Green Beret. Yes. And you are telling, like you said, the history of the Green Berets right. through beer. Right. And on your website, it's super cool because each beer has a little history to it. That's right. How do you do that? How do you know what beer to match with the history? I mean, a lot of it is creative license, you know, and sit down and come up with a beer style and we toss, toss around possible names. And when it seems to make sense, we just do it. This one is a Belgian triple. Uh, it's called Triple Volunteer. Uh, because in order to be a Green Beret, you have to volunteer for the Army, you got to volunteer for airborne school, you got to jump out of airplanes, you have to volunteer for Special Forces. Since we're doing a Belgian triple, you know, just to play on words, triple volunteer. What do y'all say about getting some food out here? Because y'all don't offer just 
like pub food. Y'all offer like gourmet meals. We yes. think it's really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, A lot really of local good. fresh ingredients too yeah. and things that are made from scratch right in the kitchen. Out of the dishes we have here, let's start with your hummus. You've got house-made hummus? House-made hummus. The vegetables are pickled in-house. And this is one of my personal favorites. And then we have strawmy sandwich, which looks delicious. <laughs> <laughs> this massive pretzel. Yeah. And yep. then some empanadas, which I am all about empanadas. <laughs> and those are what, lamb and cabbage? Uh, lamb and cabbage. Who came up with the menu? Was it something you dreamed up? Was it um, all chef? It was sort of an evolution, right? It is. It has been an evolution. Discuss beer releases. We'll discuss plates we think that will pair well with the beer that we're serving. Y'all have beer, y'all have food, yep. and y'all have my number one favorite drink of all time, coffee. The elixir <laughs> yeah. of life, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. it runs through my veins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So even before Long Tab was a thing, a good friend of mine, uh, his name's Alex Wilson, he's another Green Beret. And when the idea of Long Tap came up, I said, if we ever open up a brewery, I also want to have coffee, and you're going to be our, you're going to be the coffee we offer. Well, pleasure to meet you. How are you? I'm doing well. Don Miguel de San Antonio, it's a I pleasure. Am I'm Don Miguel de San Antonio, <laughs> thank you. You are the head brewer here. You have such an important job. What we do here is, you know, we have to create the recipes, think about what, you know, what we want to brew, put it all together, use our office in the back, and try to put great, you know, cl international classic beer styles on tap for our customers. You have a really cool office right over there. Yes, I do. It's a, uh, it's a seven barrel uh, brew house back there. Everything that we do to make the beer, get it into kegs or get it into cans, all occurs in the, in the back there. So uh, we do everything. We, we brew the beer back there. We ferment the beer back there. We get it ready for you know either canning or kegging back there. And then we bring it out here, out to the front, uh, so it can go on tap. I think there's something special coming out for us. I think there is. There you go. Perfect. So we got our cinnamon sugar pretzel. We uh, top it with our vanilla cream icing and some candied pecans that we make with beer. We soak them in beer overnight. Okay. And we toast them. So what pairing with this is a Belgian double. It's got a lot of caramel texture to it. Uh, you're also going to taste a little bit of some spiciness with a little bit of banana from the yeast, which should pair nicely with the cinnamon. It tastes delicious. So this is the perfect dessert here at Long Tab. We sell quite a few of them, yeah. Congratulations, this is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So another real popular dessert that we have is our uh, affogato. And today we're, we're pairing it with our stiletto. Mm. So what we do is we take some ice cream that's made here locally from Lake Ice Cream and nice. we pour over a nice shot of espresso. Oh God. And then we top it off with a shot of the stiletto. Ooh. Nice Belgian brown. Oh my goodness. Oh, that wakes you up. <laughs> that is, oh, that's good. Well, thank you all so much. I've enjoyed my time here at Long Tab. From the food, to the beer, to the coffee, and to the beer and the coffee mixed together. Yeah, thank you. Everything's been great. So thank you all for having us. We're going to be back out here again, for sure. Don't go anywhere. We visit our next Texas town when we come back. We kind of call ourselves the edge of the hill country, and we've got a. When you get into our area, you usually see <laughs> the hills, and yeah. we've got some beautiful places to stay, and and it's just a place to get away and relax.
Well, Dennis, this is my first time in Glen Rose, and there's no better place for me to be than with you in this beautiful museum that you run. I can tell there is so much history here. We're a family-friendly community, and we get a lot of people with their kids here. Of course, we have the dinosaur attractions, and people come here to go to Fossil Rim, the State Park, Dinosaur World. We've always been sort of a tourist town. People would come here as a getaway then. We had mineral waters. People would come here to bathe and to drink the water. They thought it had heating properties. What? Should I be getting my water from Glen Rose? Sure. Is that what you're telling yes. me? Yes, <laughs> at one point they were even selling our water in oh bottles goodness. up in the Dallas area. Wow, that, the water is good here. <laughs> it is. It's so interesting how people used to come for the mineral water and to relax and for a getaway. And now the Moonshine Festival right. is one of the main things that bring people here. In the Prohibition era, people here were already making moonshine. And so we've been called the moonshine capital of Texas during that period. Word got back to Austin and Governor Neff decided we needed to raid on Somerville County. So 100 years ago this week, Governor Neff sent a group of the Texas Rangers here. We have a picture over here on the wall of that, of what happened. And they took a photo of the stills and all that was done here. And of course, here in the museum, one of our key exhibits is Mr. Moss's moonshine steel. He donated his moonshine steel to us in 1965 when the museum opened. That's been on display here now for 58 years. Wow, that's incredible. This is so awesome. Thank you for sharing a little more about the history and, and why Glen Rose is so special. With the centennial anniversary of the Glen Rose Moonshine Raid approaching, we knew it was imperative that we bring it back and we're excited to have it off the ground and hopefully, you know, in the year's future, it just grows. A hundred year anniversary? Yes. Oh my gosh, congratulations, yes. that's a big deal. It is, <laughs> and actually, you know, it coincides with the 200 year anniversary of the Texas Rangers. And we do have the Tex Legends of the Texas Rangers here and they brought memorabilia. They're dressed in outfits representing the different um, Rangers throughout history. And okay. the Texas Rangers were the ones who were sent in to actually bust up moonshining here in Glen Rose. So it is a double whammy this year. You know, moonshine has always seemed so mysterious to me. I've actually never tried it. Is moonshine being made here on site? Like we do have locally made moonshine available for tastings right here in the heart of the courthouse lawn. We have it straight from the still here on the square. <laughs> the real deal, yes. real deal. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, well that's incredible. I cannot wait to get into all this festival has to offer. What should my strategy be tackling the festival? I'd start out checking out the speakeasy passes. You get the mason jar mug and a map for all the speakeasy locations. Ooh. Thank you, Angelica. Absolutely. This is so incredible. Congratulations. 100 years. We will be celebrating today, and I cannot wait to see what this has to offer. Stick around. Yellow Texas will be right back. Moonshine Shua. Hey, how's it going? I'm Taylor. Shua, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I literally have been at this festival for five minutes and I already know that you're a legend. And this is probably the best place for me to try my first sip of moonshine. You know, we got some green <laughs> apple, some okay. watermelon, orange cream sickle. We got some lemon drop and we got some cherry bounce. I feel like I should start with the lemon drop. Lemon drop? Something light, something refreshing, this ease actually, my way in. It's a hot day summer. Yeah. This is my favorite. Uh, I like to mix this half and half with unsweet tea and make an Arnold Palmer. How did it get to this jar? What is the process? So you, you make a fermentation. Okay. Uh, a lot of the stuff that you see here is just made out of cane sugar, uh, fermented, distilled out to where it's neutral. Okay, that's strong. Uh, it, and then it's, it's proofed down. Okay. And then we make the flavors out of it. Got it. Yeah. Should taste like a lemon drop Ooh. candy. That's good. <laughs> The like lubrication of like social interactions. It's like alcohol is always such a good time and moonshine is the same way.
for 30 years, I carried around a little piece of railroad track that I was gonna use for an anvil because right. I was always fascinated with just the way our ancestors did things, mm -hmm. you know? Our goal is we wanna make things that are generational. So, you know, these things, these are things you can buy that your kids can use, your yeah. grandkids can use, kind of like old cast iron. You know, you pass it on to your grandkids or your kids. And so that's kind of the goal is to make things that are, that'll last pretty much forever. Yes. I have to say, I'm drawn to the heart. I think yes. this is so cute. Is cool. Look how cute. If you grab one of our speakeasy passes, you get the mason jar mug. So through that, we have free drinks. And then we also have rehydrating stations to kind of get you back on your feet so that you can hit up the next one and get another taste of moonshine. Hi hey there, welcome in. Hi. Would you like a margarita? Yes. <laughs> Are you enjoying uh, everything that's going on on the square? I the speakeasy, am. all that stuff. I'm loving it. I'm glad I found you. It's real cute in here. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay, what drink is, what's happening here? Is this this is a Mule Kick margarita. Oh, okay. I just put in moonshine cherries. Mmm, mmm, mm. Good? That's good. Oh, good. So this is my second stop on the speakeasy tour. So where do you recommend I go next? Well, if you go on down uh, a little bit further, okay. there is the uh, inn on the river. Okay. And they should have bathtub gin down there for you. Bathtub gin. That's what they said they're making. I better take it easy on this then. I'm not gonna, <laughs> not gonna make it that far, okay? Okay. Well, thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a look around and then I'll, I'll circle back on my way out. They literally have a little bit of everything in here. It's so cute. Boots class and a little Southern sass. I love it. I am finally at the last stop on this speakeasy tour. I'm at Snyder's Tavern, just enjoying a little drink, enjoying the beautiful view of the river. And I have to say, it was an incredible day and moonshine might be my new favorite drink. Cheers.